Hey guys, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Uh, Claire is behind the camera. Now she's on the floor. Buddy, lying down like a little odalesque in my bed. I don't know where Claire, um, Eleanor is, but hi, welcome back to my channel. So it is Friday night. It's almost nine o'clock. I have three hours left until crew scheduling can normally call me. And then tomorrow is my last day of my six day reserve block. And that is from, uh, the reserve block is from 2 p.m. until midnight. That's when crew scheduling can call me. But they're not gonna call me tomorrow, do you know why? Because they called me tonight. <gasps> Shocker, I mean complete surprise. I did not expect this. Of course they're calling me right before my vacation, right? Um, so, <clears throat> crew scheduling called and said, hey, this is so-and-so, I forget her name. Um, you know, is this Steve? And I said, yeah. She's like, how are you? I said, completely and utterly shocked you're calling me. And however I said it, must have brightened her day because she thanked me. She's having a rough day or whatever. Um, so be nice to crew scheduling. <sighs> womp womp. Um, so yeah, they assigned me a turn tomorrow, a Denver turn. So tomorrow morning at 7.30, I have uh, my show time. Then we fly to Denver. I'm only in Denver for like 40, 45 minutes. Then we fly back to Las Vegas. And I'm back in Las Vegas by like 1.30, something like that. So it's going to be a, a relatively short day. Knock on wood that nothing, you know, traumatic happens. Because uh, I'm not packing a bag. I'm not packing a cooler or a lunch bag. I'm just taking my work tote. I'm not even taking my, my um, mix it, my little blender. I'm just taking um, a sandwich um, and some caffeine drinks. That's it. Not even taking tea with me. Just, just that. Uh, so I'm super excited. I get to go fly somewhere. Um, these hours, the credit for this trip is included in my 72 hour minimum. So I'm not being paid extra for this trip. This is not something I picked up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I will get per diem from the time I, I think from the time I check in. Is it checking in? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, until the end of my trip. But that per diem is going to be like, oh, honey, what's going on? Are you bored? Oh, do you hear him? He's bored. Um, so per diem is going to be like 20 bucks. <laughs> and taxed on top of that. So no worries. Um, so I went to the grocery store. And since um, I will probably not give myself time for even something as simple as a bowl of cereal in the morning, um, I am. I bought some um, Raisin Bran muffins so I can have a muffin or two uh, in the morning, one on the plane maybe, and then a sandwich for lunch. And when I come back home tomorrow, I can make some dinner. Um, for tonight, because I know you're curious, um, I'm going to eat the leftovers from my cabbage and noodles that I made the other day. Uh, and then I'm going to eat this. And I'm probably going to eat most of this tonight. It is a cantaloupe I bought like five or six days ago and it is really ripe so I am looking forward to and I hope it's not like skunky honestly like overripe but we'll see so that's my I'm kind of excited I go I have a trip I'm super excited um and then I'm on vacation for a week and then I have two uh two days of reserves before July so um there you go. Um, this this time of isolation is almost over. Super excited. So I will see you in the morning. Hey guys, hi. It's about quarter of seven. I'm still waiting for my Uber. It's been about 20 minutes, which is about 15 minutes longer than I'm used to waiting for an Uber. The app says I should be at the airport by seven, which is just too late for me. My check-in's at 7.30 and I like to be at the crew room a half hour, 45 minutes before um, my uh, check-in. So I'll be for me, I'll be cutting it close because I just don't like running. I don't like getting randomed and then running. So whatever. Um, it's just an, a turn to Denver. I'm glad uh, to Denver and back because I got about mm, four hours of sleep. I couldn't get to sleep early enough. Like I just could not sleep. And then Buddy at 4 a.m. exactly started crying, 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 crying to go outside. And I wasn't letting him. Is that my Uber? No. Yes. Yes. Over here. 
Why'd he go so far? Hi, right here. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Hello, hi, hi, right here. Just doing my safety check. Hello. Great, all right, so safety checks are done. Just checking the microphone on our PA. Um, and uh, you know, it used to be when we checked in, and this is not me complaining. Um, it used to be that when we, we checked in for our trip, uh, the lead would check everybody's um, required items to make sure that they are compliant to fly. That was their obligation. And sometimes it didn't happen, mostly because I think you're flying with people you know and trust and blah, blah, blah. But uh, it was sometimes, I guess, oh, look how dark it was. It is. It wasn't happening. So um, supervisors now have to double check all of our required items, which is just feels weird. Last time I flew, the last two trips, they literally had to walk us to our gate. That didn't happen today for some reason. Uh, but um, he, then they go through a whole compliance check, like like we're American. <laughs> um, uh, from what I've heard with American, rumor is what I've heard, like if they literally check your uniform before, before you get on the plane, right? So um, that just, that's never really happened for our airline. But uh, the uh, my supervisor said, Stephen, could you button that button? Because this is different than this. I don't sign my own paychecks. This is the airline telling me what to do. So, okay, I button the button. I did unbutton it again. I'll button it again just because I was supposed to. But I said to him, I said, I think according to our lookbook, we're allowed to have two buttons undone in our shirt. And he's like, no, it's one. I said, okay, could you, could you do me a favor and just look at it? I tried not to be fresh when I said that, but I may have missed that goal. Um, <laughs> so he's going to look for it and email me, but... Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, so far that's my biggest challenge of the day, so I shouldn't complain, right? Uh, I'm working with one of our super senior, I wouldn't say super senior, but she's pretty senior, um, uh, in our base. She's pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm working with someone who is still on probation, which is kind of exciting too. Uh, she was actually in training, uh, during, uh, the pandemic. Uh, she was the last class to actually graduate. Uh, she had her OE recently, and she, yesterday, I guess, was her first real flight. Uh, so this is fun. I'm flying lead. I'm up in front. Um, and it's going to be a good day, a short day. We're back in back in Vegas by early afternoon. So all is well. I'll see you guys later. All right, so I didn't tell you. It's one hour, 28 minutes to Denver from Vegas. Uh, and we are booked solid, booked complete. Um, books to 148, but it looks like our paperwork says 144 is going to show up. So, full plane. <laughs> gotta, gotta get that mask on. All right, I'll see you in Denver, guys. Look at that. That bright, shiny new jet bridge. It looks like something out of 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, so, we're in Denver. Very nice flight. Um, Denver people are very polite, but they're also very physically fit. I've never seen an aircraft so full of attractive people in my life. Um, it was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> goodness. Um, let's see, um, super easy flight. Everyone was really well behaved. Of course, it's Denver. Um, the only thing we had was one guy who was uh, visibly intoxicated. And you know, it's not like I'm a medical professional. I couldn't have told you he was drunk, but it was, yeah. Unless something was seriously wrong with him, uh, it um, I recognize uh, a few drinks. And uh, so I, I mentioned it to my coworker who's in charge of the mid cabin and asked her to actually check out what she thought. And of course, uh, he, yeah. So he wanted to order a double in the air uh, so we gave him a Sprite instead. Um, picking up the trash, I, just his behavior uh, was, it was obvious that he was under the influence of something, if not alcohol. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. That's about it. It was super easy flight, um, super short. Um, the return trip is one minute shorter, which is 
pretty normal, I guess. So one hour, 27 minutes. We're booked completely. We're booked at 150 three 58 something like that this aircraft holds 145 uh guests so that means there's a lot of uh lap children so we'll see what happens there i think that's it so i will see you in las vegas um i hope i'm making sense because i'm so darn hungry i forgot all of my food i forgot my snacks everything i've eaten um actually no i've had i had enough to eat i had a muffin and i had a cup of noodle for breakfast. I know. I have to lose weight in here. I'm eating that crap. Uh, I know I have to lose weight because when I put this mask on, my whole face does this. <laughs> when your face has back fat, you know you need to lose weight. All right. I'm going to go back in there, crack a, um, a bottle of water, and get ready for boarding. I'll see you soon. All right, I guess we're not boarding yet. I thought we were going to be boarding by now. Uh, still in Denver. Um, I just uh, booked a flight on uh, an American flight. Uh, I think I'm going from Vegas to, it might be Dallas. I forget where. Um, uh, my goal is to get to Oklahoma uh, tomorrow night. Uh, I may have to either sleep at the uh, airport or find a hotel room tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night to see if it's possible to meet with my father and his wife on uh, the 23rd. Uh, so that is my goal. Uh, there's also a Southwest flight that um, my friend uh, Kim has uh, uh, suggested. So I might um, try Southwest if this American flight doesn't work out. So uh, if, if, it, if either of them work out, I will be seeing you guys soon in Oklahoma City. Um, uh, yeah, that'll be something else. If I, if I get the chance to go, if the flights work, um, I'll be seeing my father for the first time in, oh, I don't even know, um, almost 18 years. I know, crazy, right? I met him when I was 30 or 29. Uh, and then um, it'll be, yeah, it's been, I think I was six months sober the last time I saw him. Crazy. All right, so wish me luck. Cross your fingers. Whew, it is a rude awakening to get off an aircraft where I have control of the temperature and it's around 72 degrees to step off and be back in Vegas where it's 106. Yeah. So that last leg was not a surprise. Very nice. Very nice people. Everyone paid attention. Um, in this time of COVID where everyone is wearing a mask, everyone wore a mask. To and from Denver. One guy, yeah. um, uh, super easy, and people follow directions better than they used to. I don't know, like these pa these trips I've flown since April. Everyone followed the rules. Everyone waited till the seatbelt sign was off to use the restroom. Everyone just followed the rules. I hope this I hope this pattern continues. Uh, the only thing that was of note in this last leg was that um, my coworker noticed uh, two grown men, two big, burly, manly men, uh, with one little uh, girl, a, a very, very young girl. Uh, and she seemed sort of, her head was down, her hair was over her face. And mm, that in itself isn't too weird, but there was something about the posturing of the three of them that felt a little kind of off. And so she asked me to walk by and kind of, you know, get get the vibe on what was going on. Because, you know, it's something you don't hear a lot about, but human trafficking, child trafficking happens. And it happens a lot in places like Las Vegas. So, uh, you know, she wanted me to take a look at them and Passing by when she uh, happened to look up. Oh, I should say, I should say, how how do I approach that situation? That might be useful, right? So I start two or three rows before that row in slowing down, and I'll stop in a row or two or three before them. I'll stop for a minute or two, and I'll chat with one of our guests, whoever makes eye contact with me. Hey, what's going on? Have you flown us before? Blah, blah, blah. And while I'm chatting, it gives me a chance to kind of, you know, glance around my little area so that I can kind of get a look and take my time uh, under the radar 
And then if something is a little, you know, a little off, I can walk up and just say, hey, guys, oh, look how pretty you are. I love your little dress or blah, 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 you know, and um, get a conversation started. But when I just happened to look over there, the little girl had the exact, I mean, she had her father's eyes. So it was sitting red. Exact. And when I stopped by, I was like, oh my God, I love your little dress. She was bright as a button. And I could see, I mean, it was obvious that was her father next to her. And they were chatting and having a nice time. And I think that was her grandfather next to her. So the situation was not uh, what it could have been. But that's one thing you kind of have to keep an eye out for uh, and be vigilant for. And um, so it's it's great that my coworker noticed this, uh, this pairing of people, uh, but uh, that we were uh, potentially aware that something could have potentially gone wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the only other thing is someone left their passport uh, on the plane and uh, it was in the overhead bin. So folks, I find passports all the time. Licenses all the time. Credit cards, cell phones, iPads. If you're flying, look around for your personal items because often enough we find them on the plane and they might be in Vegas and you might be in Minneapolis. Not good. I stopped off at Starbucks for my iced peach green tea lemonade. Trenta. Six dollars and change. I think that was with my discount, but uh, I used points instead. I had uh, Starbucks points to use, so I just used that instead. All right, so I'm home. I think I'm going to end this video, but I'll leave it open just in case um, anything happens. And I will see you later. If not, fly safe. Bye.